There is a professor and BLM activist who recently woke up and chose violence. She gave us a public service announcement that being a fan of Taylor Swift is actually racist. Well, and she thinks it's racist. She feels, she doesn't think it, she Not feels only that, it. the Chiefs Super Bowl win was a white supremacist oh, yeah. conspiracy. Oh, yeah, this yeah, woman's yeah. name is Melina Abdullah. She is, according to her bio, a professor of Pan-African African Studies at Cal State LA, a Black Lives Matter organizer, a Pan-Africanist, a hip-hop scholar, a daughter of God, <laughs> a womanist, a truth teller, and a mama. What the hell is a womanist? Don't ask me. Wait, so if you wait. If Don't ask me. If you're a racist, that means you're racist against another race. If you're, if you're a womanist, are you racist or are you like, Sexist just against women? A woman is a woman is. It is confusing. The hell is a woman is? I got the definition. A woman is committed to the survival of both males and females and desires a world where men and women can coexist while maintaining their cultural distinctiveness. So that doesn't sound horrible. But not I'm a guessing, feminist, maybe? So different than a feminist. Possibly based. Okay, so here was her tweet. Why do I feel like it's slightly racist to be a Taylor Swift fan? Just leaving it at that, like no explanation, no, no sources. That's just her instinct on the matter. And someone challenged her on it. They said, explain why you think that. I'm honestly interested, not a Swift fan at all, by the way. You wouldn't want anyone to think I'm racist. She said, I, I feel, not think. Kind of like that feeling I get when there are too many American flags. I love, okay, so here's, this is a funny story. This is one of those times where early on, I thought like this was a, a very early sign of the bubble of the right, which was like, I remember, I, I think it was Jack Posobiec saying like, why is it that every time I see somebody with an American flag, I just know they're a Republican. Now, on the outset, I get what he's saying. A lot of modern Democrats hate hate the idea of America and there certainly is a pushback to really really despise where you're from but I'm also friends and my last boss was as close to what you could still have today as what you'd call a blue dog democrat loved owning guns but was just politically unaware and, and didn't realize that the party she supported was would be all too happy to take away her guns if given the opportunity right but flew an American flag outside of her house it's a sign that they don't realize how not politically active a lot of people are Right? That's, I think, definitely a generational thing yes. because if you ask any like younger Democrat or liberal or progressive person, they are not into any patriotic expression whatsoever. They hate it. They hate so, it. I guess if she thinks that all Republicans are racist and it just so happens that Republicans are the only Americans left who are willing to fly an American flag outside of their house, yep. then um, I guess that's a valid observation. And she also added. Why do I feel like this was some right wing white supremacist conspiracy? Hashtag Super Bowl. Yep. Boo! Yep. So she's also suggesting that the Chiefs win was, uh, and well, also yeah. Taylor Swift's attendance. It was all a big white supremacist conspiracy. And this inspired a lot of outrage. Maybe some of it wasn't deserved. I mean, she's really just a rando who works at a college somewhere. Yeah. But. Uh, <laughs> I think that people are just tired of the sweeping generalizations Absolutely. just because Taylor Swift is white or beca because her fans are white, they're racist. I mean, and again, not it's beyond parody. Not to pick up my lifelong rant about how professors are the worst human beings in, hi in history. You'll have 120 of them and two will be good. And this is just another example of that. It's like people that live in perpetual childhood like forever they go to elementary school they go to middle school they go to high school they go to college they get a master's degree and guess where they work college uh and then They've 10 years never, they can get it which means they literally never leave they the never bubble. leave yeah. and but, so they're perpetually in this yeah. baby state and I, because the colleges get federal funding they benefit from making all of these useless departments right. and hiring all of these people that provide no value it's also funny because like for a lot of this stuff like like for people like this we're talking about her like she's in a bubble but i think more and more every day mainly because of the internet everyone lives in their own bubble and they just don't realize it because you're controlled by your algorithm now because of your phone oh i'm beyond like, that it's, uh, it's like when people dismiss and it's a valid rebuttal when people say that doesn't matter it's anecdotal evidence 
everybody lives by anecdotal evidence now. Yeah. So even, even in a world now where you can lie with statistics just as easily, what does it matter? Like what, what does anecdotal evidence matter? What does statistics matter if all of it can be manipulated by someone else? Right. So whenever somebody says, I feel this way, I get it. I get what she's saying. It's her truth. It's her truth. And she doesn't realize that she's trapped in her own ridiculously overly progressive bubble that she can't escape because it's constantly reinforcing what she already believes. Look, I'm just saying if you want liberal white women to support your cause, if you want liberal white women to come out and protest for BLM and donate and everything, you cannot attack Taylor Swift. This is not the hill to die on. This is not the hill to die on. They will turn on you for Taylor yep. Swift. They will choose her every time. Yep. And someone responded with the actual demographics of Swifties. They lean female and white. Shocker. They make under fifty thousand dollars a year. That was shocking. That part was shocking to me. I was yeah, you know, and they're suburban be millennials. The, probably because they're younger. I figured these would they're be millennials. Like the, these uh. would be like the. Like seventy five to one hundred fifty k. Yeah. <laughs> like I figured these would be the seventy five to one hundred fifty k HR manager class. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't know how these millennials are f- able to afford the Eras Tour tickets that are like twelve thousand dollars. They're the ones who are financing those pizzas when they order them for. They're literally going to be in debt for life because they went to the Eras tour. Yes. uh, And then someone responded jokingly, literally everything is racist. And she said, indeed. (laughs) Like, she actually means it. She decided to to double down. And I do want to point out, and this is not a very positive thing to think about. It's actually really depressing. They win either way because what they've done is at least people who live in this sphere, they've already made everyone critically conscious of race, which is what they want. They want you to think about it in all contexts all the time. Actually, I think they benefit from racial minorities being conscious of race in that way. No, they wouldn't. And having white, white people, people remain white uh, people unconscious of race or only conscious of race in the context of self flagellating. You got, well, yeah, true. you got thing. a stink bug right here. Wait, in, the, in the in the headphone itself. Uh, there's a twenty dollar one here from down. Pat the Plumber. It says Dane, how effing dare you? I thought you were cool. S M H. Cinnamon twists uh, for cinnamon cinnamon twists for life. You better hope I never plumb a toilet you use. I will Danny Glover you. I'm assuming you meant Bud. Bud. Yeah. What did Dane ex- do? Yeah. A little excessive. He he, he uh, insulted. They're not that good. They're not that good. You're allowed to voice your opinion. Thanks for the 20 bucks, though. (laughs) Melina also added, here's the thing. When fake-ass journalists from right-wing outlets turn tweets into news, they spur actual violent responses from their idiotic white delusionist followers. Hashtag Taylor Swift has some racist fans. Hashtag doubling down. Dude, this is why I think there's such sage wisdom in what Michael Malice says. Because uh, I feel like this side of the aisle kind of like beats themselves in the chest is like uh, i want to have a conversation with people i disagree with and blah 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 i was like i want nothing to do with them anymore Good point. i truly i want nothing to do with them yeah. and it's why i made my initial statement about like i'm somewhat purposely abrasive when in in my language like choice and word choice when i meet people it's because if you're offended i want you to run away from me like i truly i have no time to deal with you anymore i'm 34 i don't care <laughs> i do not care so you agree you think you're old <laughs> did not say <laughs> you're 34 you just am, you've given up you've given up i am middle but, age here's, i'm yeah, kidding here's to to mary's point this is not Are the you class kidding? this is not the class you want to piss off because there is this story this lady says uh should i go to the taylor swift concert or should i get my kidney transplant she had to think about it, which tells you everything. She got the kidney transplant, hmm. and it tells you everything you need to know about the serious nature of their devotion to Taylor Swift. Hmm. It's a very difficult calculation to make. This is Tamara Gray, who thought to, who was thinking about skipping her kidney transplant to attend Taylor's show Friday in Sydney, Australia. Can't Seriously. that literally kill you? In an interview with Nine News, Gray said she was heading to the arena when she received a phone call from the hospital telling her they finally Bruh. found her kidney. To be fair, that is like hilarious. The timing, the worst time is like, yeah, like that is like that is the type of thing that will lead you to be like, God is out to get me. Okay, but if you say no, you're going to be on the waiting list for like no, no, what you'll, another? You'll die. You'll, you'll never, literally. Yes, she, you'll did die. she choose to get the she kidney? Got, she got the kidney. 
Okay. Uh, okay. She's been one of many people registered for kidney transplant in Australia, never thinking she would receive a donor. She was wrong. In fact, the 35-year-old Queensland mother said she, she has a kid. And she's like, maybe I should go to this concert instead. I maybe mean, I should go to the Taylor Swift concert and leave my child to be up, motherless. Being, you know, <laughs> taking care of my progeny matters, but... So does this Taylor Swift concert, am I right? <laughs> uh, but she was wrong. In fact, the 35-year-old mother said she was at the Gold Coast Airport waiting to board a plane for Sydney when she got the call around 8.30 in the morning. She said, I won't lie, there was a split second where I considered Bruh. saying no to the kidney, but you know I'm not crazy. Well, the fact that you considered it even for a split second means that maybe you're that's not crazy, crazy, but it means that Taylor has a crazy hold over people. Especially at 35, that's so young. You have your best years ahead of you. Yeah, this isn't a 65-year-old or 80-year-old. Well, even 65 is too young to do that. She's basically a baby. Yes. A baby. A baby. She's very young, just like Dane. Yes. Yes. Just like oh, Dane. I also wanted to share this voicemail that was sent to the professor in response to her tweet about Taylor Swift. Here, let's, let's listen to this, guys. Hi, Melina. This is Ethan George. I'm from Texas. Uh, you're, you're a joke. You're disgusting. You're awful. You're ignorant. You're what's wrong with this country. You're the reason we're heading in such a negative direction. How dare you throw out the racist ideas that you throw out on a daily basis? You're a fucking joke of a fucking cunt is what you are. I hope you fucking die. So you fucking deserve to be so fucking ignorant and to spread the fucking to spread the fucking negativity that you spread and infuse it into people's brains the way you do is downright disgraceful, you stupid fucking cunt. Okay. That's not gonna endorse the name calling, no, no, not going to endorse the, the, the death wish, up. but otherwise I this is never. this is the way that people are going to respond going forward if if it, the discourse continues to be this polarizing and divisive yeah. this is how people are going to start to respond it's depressing that this is where we've come to especially like in a country where we're like it's just so unserious that we live here in the west where you are in the most you know student crushing student loan debt and housing market aside you are in the most prosperous nation <laughs> at the most prosperous time in human history you carry around a device that can tell you just about everything you want unless that advice is uh, the accomplishments of white people in your pocket but other than that yeah, this... other than google gemini <laughs> like for the most part you've never been more blessed to be born at this time in human history this mega rich global pop star oh, is the reason why the employees follow her around at Target. Mm -hmm. That is why she is at fault for racism. Somebody says it's fake. Even if it's fake, the fact that it has to be considered uh, possibly as real proves to you that we are in a ridiculous time in human history. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.